There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond our power or our will. People are not disturbed by things, but by the views they take of them. Any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself and in no instance bypass the discriminations of reason? The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. If you are careless and lazy now, and keep putting things off and always deferring the day after which you will attend to yourself, you will not notice that you are making no progress, but you will live and die as someone quite ordinary. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. Books are the training weights of the mind. They are very helpful, but it would be a bad mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Freedom is the only worthy goal in life. It is won by disregarding things that lie beyond our control. If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you but answer. He was ignorant of my other faults, else he would not have mentioned these alone. First, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Man is not worried by real problems so much as by his imagined anxieties about real problems. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Don't just say you have read books. Show that through them, you have learned to think better, to be a more discriminating and reflective person. Circumstances don't make the man, they only reveal him to himself. Other people's views and troubles can be contagious. Don't sabotage yourself by unwittingly adopting negative, unproductive attitudes through your associations with others. Remember, it is not enough to be hit or insulted to be harmed. You must believe that you are being harmed. If someone succeeds in provoking you, realize that your mind is complicit in the provocation. I laugh at those who think they can damage me. They do not know who I am. They do not know what I think. They cannot even touch the things which are really mine and with which I live. Seek not the good in external things. Seek it in yourselves. Now is the time to get serious about living your ideals. How long can you afford to put off who you really want to be? Care take this moment. Immerse yourself in its particulars. Respond to this person, this challenge, this deed. Quit evasions. Stop giving yourself needless trouble. It is time to really live to fully inhabit the situation you happen to be in now. Decide to be extraordinary and do what you need to do now. Know first who you are and then adorn yourself accordingly. You know yourself what you are worth in your own eyes and at what price you will sell yourself. Personal merit cannot be derived from an external source. Demand not that things happen as you wish, but wish them to happen as they do, and you will go on well. Difficulty shows what men are. Therefore, when a difficulty falls upon you, remember that God, like a trainer of wrestlers, has matched you with a rough young man. Tentative efforts lead to tentative outcomes. Therefore, give yourself fully to your endeavors. Decide to construct your character through excellent actions, 
and determined to pay the price of a worthy goal. If you want to make progress, put up with being perceived as ignorant or naive in worldly matters. Don't aspire to a reputation for sagacity. No great thing is created suddenly, any more than a bunch of grapes or a fig. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. What would have become of Hercules, do you think, if there had been no lion, hydra, stag, or boar, and no savage criminals to rid the world of? What would he have done in the absence of such challenges? It is better to do wrong seldom and to own it, and to act right for the most part, than seldom to admit that you have done wrong, and to do wrong often. If you wish to be good, first believe that you are bad. Don't live by your own rules, but in harmony with nature. Don't put your purpose in one place, and expect to see progress made somewhere else. There is no shame in making an honest effort. Whenever anyone criticizes or wrongs you, remember that they are only doing or saying what they think is right. They cannot be guided by your views, only their own. So if their views are wrong, they are the ones who suffer in so far as they are misguided. Why not care for that side of you, where you and the gods are equals? Sick and yet happy, in peril and yet happy, dying and yet happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Many people who have progressively lowered their personal standards in an attempt to win social acceptance and life's comforts bitterly resent those of philosophical bent, who refuse to compromise their spiritual ideals and who seek to better themselves. Take care not to hurt the ruling faculty of your mind. If you were to guard against this in every action, you should enter upon those actions more safely. There is a time and place for diversion and amusement, but you should never allow them to override your true purposes. For where you find unrest, grief, fear, frustrated desire, failed diversion, jealousy, and envy, happiness has no room for admittance, and where values are false, these passions inevitably follow. Only the educated are free. Attach yourself to what is spiritually superior, regardless of what other people think or do. Hold to your true aspirations no matter what is going on around you. Be discriminating about what images and ideas you permit into your mind. Do not try to seem wise to others. Small-minded people blame others. Average people blame themselves. The wise see all blame as foolishness. If you would be a reader, read. If a writer, write. It is difficult to both keep your faculty of choice in a state conformable to nature and at the same time acquire external things. It is a fact of life that other people, even people who love you, will not necessarily agree with your ideas, understand you, or share your enthusiasm. You become what you give your attention to. Men are not afraid of things, but of how they view them. We have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. An ignorant person is inclined to blame others for his own misfortune. To blame oneself is proof of progress, but the wise man never has to blame another or himself. It is unrealistic to expect people to see you as you see yourself. The first and most important field of philosophy is the application of principles such as do not lie. Whoever is going to listen to the philosophers needs considerable practice in listening, 